<laughs> Governor, thank you for being with us. Thank you. So I just wanted to check in first off the top. You have your press briefing on Thursday. Have you come to any concrete decisions about Thanksgiving or further restrictions? I'm not going to do further restrictions on Thursday. Next week, I'm going to be announcing some restrictions for Thanksgiving. Uh, my ask now of people for Thanksgiving is celebrating your own home with the people you live with. Um, I just did a lot of restrictions and I want everyone to pay attention to them. As a reminder, you know, everyone ought to be home by 10 o'clock. Restaurants and bars need to be closed by 10 o'clock. Uh, wear your face masks everywhere. Um, sports, a whole bunch of new uh, regulations around particularly indoor sports. So I'm going to let those settle in. So no new regulations this week, but just a call to the people of Rhode Island to follow the ones. I believe if people follow the new rules, that sh could be sufficient. So we're going to let that ride for a little bit. Um, the numbers today not looking good. Yeah. Uh, more than 700 cases for the first time. Positivity rate over 7%. Hospitalizations are continuing to go up. Um, and the difference I think now with the hospitalizations is that in the spring there was there were restrictions in place. Uh, Non-elective surgeries, non-critical surgeries were not happening. So there was there were less people in the hospital at the time in the spring. Now there are non-COVID patients there as well. Is there any concern about that? And are you considering once again postponing elective non-critical mm -hmm. surgeries? That isn't the plan this time around. So now we have field hospitals. You know, we have a field hospital in Cranston with over 300 beds that we could light up in a, in a matter of weeks. I hope we don't do that. And if we follow the rules, we shouldn't have to, but I'm prepared. We're getting ready. It's unfortunate. We're looking at the possibility of it. So we're in better shape now. I mean, we're much more prepared. We have, we, just to, you know, assuage some concerns, you know, we have a year's worth of N95 masks, a year's worth of um, these sorts of masks, gloves, face shield, gowns. We have field hospitals prepared. Doesn't mean we want to use them, but uh, it's not quite the panic, if you will. Uh, and so, no, the plan would be to allow them to continue their business. Frankly, the hospitals would go out of business if we don't allow that. And so the plan would be to use the field hospitals instead. And at this point, there's only one remaining field hospital, and you think that's sufficient? Uh, well, yes and no. Uh, we haven't actually begun on the process of taking down the convention center hospital, and we're going to hold for just a minute on before we do that. Okay. Um, on the topic of the budget and the CARES Act funding, this is probably the most common question I get from viewers. The last time we okay. spoke, I think you estimated there's about 500 million that was not going to be spent from the CARES Act money. Is that still a ballpark of? Well, no, that hasn't yet been spent. Okay. That hasn't yet been spent. So, um, you know, I need to keep some in reserve. I'll give you a perfect example. Last week, I came out and said, restaurants are closed at 10 o'clock. And oh, by the way, we're putting money out the door immediately two restaurants between $2,000 and $10,000, that right there will be $10 million. So, and we're struggling with uh, homelessness. We're going to have to do something around homelessness during the pandemic because you can't isolate, obviously, if you're homeless. So in any event, we've got between four and 500 presently unallocated. Uh, some of it um, we need to, to hold because to continue to meet the needs. Do you think that there will be a allowance from Congress to say you can use some of that to help fill the budget deficit. So I hope so. You know, it's a very difficult to govern when the White House and Congress is so dysfunctional. Um, right now, you can't use this money to fill a budget hole. It's not permissible. And it disappears at the end of the year. And it disappears at the end of the year. We could use it to replenish our unemployment insurance fund which has been utterly depleted. So there is that. I am told, however, that there's a high probability that they'll allow us to use the money for, to help us with the budget, but Congress has to change the rules and beyond December 31st. So I'm just, um, I'm trying to balance all of these competing needs in the face of great uncertainty.
Back in the spring, I think the estimated deficit was around 900 million, a shocking figure to many folks. What do you believe the projected deficit is right now? For this fiscal year, it's closer to 300 million and a little more than that for next year. And I understand either earlier today or maybe later this afternoon, you're supposed to meet with uh, Speaker designate Shikarchi. Mm -hmm. um, was there any conversation or do you plan to have a conversation with him about potentially pushing the budget conversation into 2021? No, I think he is committed. Um, the General Assembly has already committed to come back in November to deal with the 21 budget. That's the responsible thing to do. Uh, and, the, and I know the, the speaker, the new speaker and the Senate president are, want to do that. Uh, then the question is 2022, and that we'll have to deal with next year. Mm. Some parents are expressing concern and frustration about schools with these rising case numbers. Uh, people are becoming close contacts. They're getting pulled out of the classroom. There's a teacher yeah. shortage, as we know, and many kids are being forced to go remote. Is there a point in time where you say, you know what, two weeks, we're going to go fully remote just to sort of get a, a lid on the cases, or maybe you say, after Thanksgiving or after Christmas, kids are gonna stay home for a couple of weeks. The, um, sending the kids home won't put a lid on the cases. As many children are getting COVID who are learning at home virtually as the ones in school. So, you know, it's possible around the holidays to, that different schools might decide just to give teachers a bit of a break and go virtual for a period of time. But it's not true to say, we'll send the kids virtually in the case, we'll put a lid on the cases, because that's not what will happen. It's not like children are going home and staying home. They're playing sports, they're going to the store, they're hanging out with their friends, they're with their family. So the, the cases are gonna continue to be there. And as you know how I feel about this, they're losing out on school. So it is very, very, very difficult to be a teacher in a school today. And man, they're working hard and we owe them a lot. But the children deserve school and the consequences to these kids and to our society, long term and short term, of letting too many kids be out of school for too long are devastating. So we just have to shine on and keep pushing. I want to end on a, a positive note. Uh, we got some good news from Pfizer yesterday yes. that their vaccine is 90% effective. What does this mean for Rhode Island? So that's a game changer, obviously. And that's just one of a half a dozen um, vaccines in late stages. The f I think the scientists and others who are following it were hoping for 60 or 70% effectiveness. 90 plus percent effectiveness is um, fantastic news. So it has to get FDA approval, it has to be distributed. You should know, Rhode Island should know, we're right now working every day, I have a whole team working on vaccines so that we're fully ready to distribute the vaccine when it's available. And once we can start doing that, imagine this conversation if everyone in a nursing home was immunized. You know, if everyone over a certain age or with certain health conditions were immunized, every hospital worker or you know healthcare worker were immunized it's a it's a just a completely different discussion so it's hope it is hopeful and as i that's why i say to everybody hang in there with me follow the rules hope is around the corner and let's just hang in there and i just have to check since we spoke on friday has anyone from the biden transition team reached out no. to you okay. no they have not but i'm thrilled that we have a new president-elect Anything else you'd like to add, Governor? I would add one point. Um, it's, it's, it is disconcerting to see how our cases are going up. And, you know, I spend my afternoon figuring out how are we going to staff the field hospital? How much is it going to cost? You asked about the leftover CRF. Okay, that's millions of dollars a month. Can we staff it properly? Today I learned that most hospitals are diverting patients. So if you have to go to the emergency room, they send you to another hospital. Um, you, people who continue to think this isn't a big deal, 
you just need to know that it's, um, it, it is hurting people. If it's your child in an ambulance going to the hospital and they're diverted someplace else, how would you feel? That's what's happening right now. So, you know, we sent out the alarm at noon on Sunday. That was a new approach. I'm trying to get people's attention, but we do have to rein it back in because it's, gonna, it's getting pretty real pretty fast. Governor, thank you. Thank you, Kim.